house rather than to the nasty streets. And so that's why the courtyard came about. This was on. His name was Senior Ray. He always worked with F somewhere in his furniture. And perhaps you'll be seeing some of his furniture in the two houses that you're going to see this afternoon. It was later on the night. near the mouth of the river. And many visitors are surprised to learn that it is not near the mouth of the river. We're 90 miles from the mouth of the river. But this was the highest land that he could find, and where the French market is today, why they had a Choctaw trading post. So we guess he figured that if it was good enough for the natives, it would be good enough for him.
was out to see. Evolved 
which recognized both tradition and machine. Among his colleagues were many of the distinguished designers of this period. Florence Schusnall at Bacon, Harry Bertorio, Harry Weiss, Ralph Raxon, and Eero Sarina. In 1940, MoMA, the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, established a department of industrial design which was de destined to exert a great and widespread influence on the design of household objects in America. During the year of its opening, the Museum of Modern Art held an, a competition organized by Elliot Noyes with Ira Hirschman and was called the Organic Design in Home Furnishings. The competition was juried by Albert Alto, Marcel Breyer, Alfred Barr, Edward Stone, and Frank Parrish. Edgar, Edgar Kaufman Jr. and Bloomingdale's department store were two of the sponsors, while Bloomingdale's was planning to market the prize-winning furniture. The first prize in two categories, for seating and other furniture for living room case goods, was won by two young architects, Charles Eames and Eero Saarinen, the son of Elio Saarinen, who were to become the leading furniture designers of the post-war period. The prize-winning design work for seating for a set of chairs constructed of molded plywood on a set of four slender aluminum rod legs. The chair was a marked departure from the geometrical forms of the Bauhaus designers. The construction of the chair involved non-standard methods like plywood bending of complex curves, bonding of wood to rubber and metal. But as the war was imminent, the production was halted. Charles Eames and Ray Kaiser met at Cranbrook Academy of Art and were married in 1941 in Chicago, Illinois. Soon they moved to Southern California. The office of Charles and Ray Eames eventually became the official title of this extraordinary productive collaboration. Charles designed motion, pic motion picture sets for MGM while they worked at developing low-cost techniques for wood lamination and molding. This experimentation grew into an independent research laboratory, which during the war years was commissioned by the Navy to produce molded plywood splints and stretchers, and later experimental glider shells. At the same time, the Eameses were giving more attention to the uses of photography as record and as communication, and began the use of fast slide technique to illustrate lectures and present ideas. In 1946, the molded plywood techniques and models were completed. Ray and Charles designed what is generally known as the Eames chair, a dining chair with seat and back made of panels of body curved plywood attached to a metal rod frame by little rubber cushions. These rubber cushions, in addition to, the, to providing resilience, give support to the body in slightly different postures. This chair was made also in a wide range of treatment of the seat and back in plain wood or covered with foam rubber or nargo hide or leather. This plywood inch chair was a 1955 Thunderbird, the Monsanto house in Disneyland, and the walk on the moon. It became the chair for modern interiors, synonymous as it was with elegance, beauty, and comfort, and the rare phenomenon, somehow retaining its handcrafted look and feel in an age of mass-produced furniture. The same year, the Museum of Modern Art put on an unprecedented unprecedented one-man furniture show of Eames designs. Evans Products began production of the plywood chair group, as well as the children's furniture and the folding screens. 
Soon production was taken over by Herman Miller, Inc. in Michigan, with which Eames has been closely associated. The war had encouraged considerable technological development in the production of plastics and the shaping of metal sheets. Ray and Charles took advantage of these developments for furniture making. In 1946, they began to design a series of shelf chairs based on the principle of the 1940 prize winning chairs, but using the new materials and methods they developed in the Eames Venice workshop. First, they used sheets of steel stamped out to uh, form the seat, the back, the arm, and coated it with neoprene. But these prototypes were unsatisfactory, and soon they turned to polyester reinforced fiberglass, which is a virtually in indestructible stain resistant material. This became the basic material for the nest of furniture development, the fiberglass shell chairs. Later, a group of wire based furniture were added to the collection. With furniture production underway, a group of architectural projects followed, including the Eames' own house, all seeking to provide undogmatic spaces for pleasurable and informative juxtapositions of things, the same sort of juxtapositions that characterize the Eames' films, which began in this same period, Parade and Blacktop, if you remember those. Their house in Pacific Palisades, fashioned from readily available prefabricated components, became a classic like the Inns chair and showed how modern technology and art could truly be merged. Then in 1952 appeared the first production of multimedia, multiple images complete with sound and cued smells. The title was a rough sketch of a sample lesson for a hypothetical course, and the subject of the lesson was communication. Also in 1953-54, Charles and Ray Eames taught at a course for beginning architecture students at the University of California, Berkeley. Communications techniques from this stage on are an important part of the Eames office production. Subsequent, subsequent films include a communications primer, the information machine done for IBM at the Brussels World Fair in 1958, the huge seven screen show done for the US State Department at Moscow in 1959, the multi-image introduction of the US science exhibition in Seattle in 1962, the IBM pavilion at the New York World's Fair in 1964-65, and computer glossary for Hemisphere in San Antonio in 1968. Special exhibitions were by now part of the office product. The first of the Museum of Modern Art's Good Design exhibition in 1950. Nehru, his life and his India, made at the request of the Indian government, which was shown in five national capitals. Charles and Ray made their first visit to India in 1958 and prepared a report to the government on the problems of design and environmental quality in India, which was instrumental in setting up the National Design Institute in Ahmedabad. The first of the uh, Mathematica exhibition for IBM in 1961 Photography in the city at the Smithsonian Institution in 1968. What is designed at the Musée des Arts Decoratifs in Paris in 1969. By 1956, the lounge chair and ottoman began to replace the molded plywood as the classic in chair. I'm sure you all know which lounge chair I'm talking about. The 1956 Eames Rosewood and Leather Lounge Chair in Ottoman with feather stuffed leather cushions on a framework of anodized aluminum 
is a truly splendid embodiment of the idea of modern personal luxury. It is like a kind of throne made of very rich materials. It, it allows the body to recline, slouch, to lean back or pull forward. It was not designed as a chair in the traditional sense of seat, back and leg, but rather as a series of curved surfaces that give the body support at key places to the force of functionalist design. This chair was expensive to make and was expensive to buy. Perhaps this explains why it did not achieve widespread popularity when it was introduced. The chair was never actually sold through retail market. But the lounge chair had a tremendous impact during the 1970s when the baby boom generation started to buying the knockoffs of the new chair. You only wonder why the same kind of thing did not happen when the chain chair was first, first introduced. Perhaps its problem may have been its throne-like quality. It does not fit easily into any particular look and claims a large part of the room calling much attention to the search of comfort. During the 1976 presidential debates, an each lounge chair was placed next to each of the podiums to allow one candidate to rest while the other was talking. Neither candidate ever dared to sit in this his chair. Even one of even one of the debates was interrupted for 27 minutes by a sound system failure. Remember that? The series of uh, airport seating started with O'Hare and Dulles in 1962. Later designs include the Eames chair designed for Director Billy Wilder in 1968 and the soft pad aluminum group in 1969. I would like to show you some slides uh, this time. in California. That's another view of the Ames house. The interior view of the house. This is a Lockheed pilot seat an experimental birch plywood piece done in 1943. That's the beginning of things. It's a three-legged chair prototype with early base. Molded plywood, dyed black, and the base is in steel rod, black, 1945. The famous well-known children's chair and stool, molded plywood in alcohol dye, 1945. That's an early generation prototype chair, black molded plywood and black and white cap hide, 1946. Molded walnut plywood chair, 1946. Most of you probably don't know, but they designed this beautiful uh, folding screens made of molded ash plywood. These were designed in 1946. Metal dining chair, molded birch plywood. It's dyed red designed in 1946. Now that's called a minimal chair, a prototype piece, steel and wood, wood back, coated stamped steel seat, 1948. That's an in-storage unit produced, it's a production piece, steel, wood and fiberglass, 1951. That was an ex 
experimental wire sofa that was never produced. Upholstery not shown, obviously. 1951. That was called the My Plastic Chair, designed in 1951 and made in the uh, 1960s. The shell is in black fiberglass, the base is in steel tubing, and the host is in red fabric. That's one of the famous stacking chairs from the early 1950s. White fiberglass, black steel base, and this one is what they call the trim down shell. Remember that? Lounge chair design in 1956. Made of molded rosewood, plywood, and black leather. Perhaps one of the most plagiarized chair designs next to the Brewer S frame chair in the century. That's called the La Fonda armchair, designed in 1960. White fiberglass shell blue fabric, black nylon coated base. Tandem seating design in 1962. Experimental fiberglass fabric on one side, black marker hide on the other side, aluminum legs. Drafting chair design in the 1960s, fiberglass shell again. Ten thick skin, both sides of the shell, rafting base. Chef's design in 1968 in leather and aluminum. This prototype was in Charles' office for quite a while, now at the Vitra Museum in Switzerland. This is a plastic side chair with what they call the Eiffel Tower base, an experimental piece designed in 1951. The complete chair was vacuum chrome plated as an experimental prank in 1968. This chair was stolen from MoMA in May of 1989. Please let us know if anybody sees it. <laughs> Soft pad reclining chair designed in 1969. Black leather, aluminum swivel, and tilts. Also an Eames marble top table. Plastic armchair, a prototype piece. Aluminum and fiberglass. Lounge chair, ottoman base. That's that. firm of Kevin Roche and John Dinkello, successors to the office of Aero Sarna. In 1970, Charles Eames was appointed to the National Council of the Arts for, for a six-year term. He held the Charles Elliott Norton Professorship of Poetry at Harvard for the academic year of 1970 to 71. In 1972, at the IBM showroom at 590 Madison Avenue, the Eames office presented the first of eight off-the-street exhibitions from Fibonacci to Babbage and from Copernicus to Isaac Newton. IBM's participation in a celebration of the bicentennial in an exhibition honoring Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson followed very naturally from that sequence. 
opening in Paris in 1975 to Warsaw and London and opening in 1976 at the Metropolitan Museum of New York and then Chicago, Los Angeles, and Mexico City. From 1975 to 1976, Ray Eames served on the panel of the Arts, Education, and American set up by the American Council for the Arts and Education. In 1977, Charles Eames was Regent Professor at the University of California, Los Angeles. Charles Eames died in St. Louis on August 21st, 1978. In 1985, the International Congress of Societies of Industrial Designers designated Charles Eames most influential designer of the 20th century. Ray Eames continued as a consultant to IBM and after collaborating on a book based on the film Powers of Ten with Phillips and Phyllis Morrison concentrated on compiling and organizing the Eames papers for the Library of Congress. She also completed work on a book detailing Eames' work soon to be re released to Harry Abrams, Inc. in New York this fall. Ray Eames died in Los Angeles on August 21st, 1988, precisely 10 years to the day after Charles' death. Louis Huxtable, the noted architecture critic, said, and I quote, they were so connected in life in they, they, and in their work. It seems fitting that they would also be connected in their death. With Ray Eames' passing, a legend came to a close. Our society will present the award to the Eames Foundation and the Eames Office. Thank you very much.